MSI Z790 carbon motherboard. Is this your best value in a Z790? We're gonna take this thing apart, go over some of the specs and see if we can answer that question. So I think I've made my stance on Z790 motherboards pretty clear, but in case you missed it, you can check it out here. But hey, I get it. You don't care about cost of performance. You don't care that Intel's changing sockets and this is likely a dead platform. You like the latest and the greatest. And you know what? I'm the same way. So let's talk about a solid mid-range option in a Z790 motherboard from a reputable manufacturer. Right here, we have the MSI Carbon Z790. And we're gonna take this thing apart, go over some of the features and specs of it and see, is this board worth your money? Now look, $480 is hardly a budget motherboard, but it's a whole lot lower than some other options like MSI's own Ace or the Aorus Elite. Before we jump in the specs, we am gonna go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Uh, we'll take a look at it, maybe pull the heat sinks off and see what we're working with. And I mean, I, we gotta admit, like, it is a great looking board. Um, in fact, it was really close to winning me over whenever we did our AMD build. There's also the AMD version of this X670E Carbon, I believe is what MSI's lineup is. And we ultimately went with the ASUS board that you guys have seen in previous videos, but I really do like the look, the design. You have all your different USB headers um, just to connect to like front IO, things like that. Of course, your obligatory sticker pack that every manufacturer must include. Now that we have this thing unboxed, let's go ahead and get the heat sinks off and see what we're working with. So the overall build quality of this board is great and MSI typically does a really good job there. They, they tend to not skimp out on any of the important things. Um, it supports 12th and 13th gen Intel chips, but with DDR5 speeds up to 7600, you're really gonna get the most out of this by going with something like a 13900K. It has five M.2 slots um, with pretty substantial heat sinks for them. So it should keep your storage running at its optimal temperature. Now, one knock against it is only one of those five slots is actually Gen 5. I'm on the fence whether or not that matters. So there's no Gen 5 storage out there yet to buy. When it does come out, it's probably gonna be insanely expensive. And in the real world, you're not gonna notice the difference between a Gen 4 storage like MSI Spadium M480 or a Samsung 980 Pro and whatever speeds a Gen 5 gets you especially if you're using this for games. It has a PCIe 5.0 slot here. Um, the other expansion slot is only 4.0, but again, with no GPUs actually using more than four right now, it's not really gonna be an issue. Um, even with the PCIe 5.0, that's great for future proofing, but I, I do question the value on a, a motherboard that's not gonna support future generation chips. It has 19 one one power phases at 105 amp. I've said this before, but this is an area where they tend to lean on you to overspend. So you'll see boards with 20, 21, even higher, and it's not really necessary. It's something that is really easy for the manufacturer to overbuild and then slap another $100 on the price tag when you're never gonna actually get any benefit from it. On the rear IO, you have all the usual suspects, um, tons of USB 3.2 slots, uh, only two type C, which I would like to see more than that. And I, and I wish manufacturers would start including more with so many peripherals shifting away from A into type C, I always find myself hunting for an open port. It has two and a half gig LAN. Should that be 10 at this price point? Probably so, but in reality, do any of you actually have access to that? So is it gonna actually be an issue that affects you? 
Finally, we have a full complement of audio jacks for 7.1, which is great. And that is an area that in less expensive boards, you kind of see them skimp out sometimes and just include like a line in and a line out. So what I recommend this board for your build? The answer is yes and no. MSI makes a phenomenal motherboard and a great product and it is packed with next gen features. It's just unfortunate that there's probably not gonna be a next gen CPU that you can pair with this thing in a year or two. There's also some competitor options like Asus's Rogue Strix line having uh, a couple models cheaper than this with near identical feature sets. Look, there's a lot to love about this board and it packs a great feature set at a really good price. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to what do you value the most? Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content. And as always, thanks for watching.